Hi guys, Billy back and this time we are looking at the Ash Willams figure by Asmus Toys. And this is the exclusive edition. I didn't actually plan to pick the exclusive up. I think I pre-ordered the normal one without the base or anything. But for some strange reason, maybe Asmus had some left over, they sent me my invoice and it said the exclusive big stand edition. And I was like, do I really want the deluxe edition? I could, I could email them and tell them, no, I don't want it. But then I thought, you know what? I've missed out on these sort of deluxe versions before, especially the Spider-Man Far From Home. I think it was the stealth suit with the lava sort of monster base. That one, and I've always regretted not picking that up because I do love that base. So if I can, maybe I should actually pick up the deluxe versions. And then afterwards, if I don't like it, I could always sell the base or sell the whole figure on afterwards anyway. But as you can see, this was a controversial figure when it was released the final product because there was quite a few uh, problems with it i think one of the main ones was the fact that they couldn't spell williams um asmus have done that before they've accidentally misspelt things in english i, I don't think they're a, an english company which is fine but you know maybe maybe get someone who has a really sort of good understanding of the english language so that you don't misspell things on their super expensive products because the fans aren't going to be happy but we're kind of here ash willams it's supposed to say williams look at this this is a nice shipper box isn't it looks very good there's nothing on it i mean it's just cardboard but if we actually turn it to the side here we can see evil dead 2 dead by dawn so it's kind of more like an evil dead 2 figure than say evil dead or army of darkness but then it's got the exclusive edition on it and lovely asmus toys logo with a tree just here i don't know there was a tree scene in the first movie, I think, which was a bit like, mm. And then, of course, on the back, you've got a picture of the base with more sort of forestry sort of image in there. It's quite nice, but they misspelled it. And here's one of the things I was going to say about the misspelling on these figures. Um, Asmus went through and apparently they fixed all their packaging so that the, uh, there was a sticker on the front hiding the misspelling with the proper spelling. And they did the same for the base. Now, if you got the misspelled box with the misspelled base i'd recommend you hold on to that because even though it's not accurate and you know we're all about accuracy in the one six scale world we are also very much collectors and when they release something that has a defect or a slight flaw then you've seen it with the star wars figures the old star wars figures sometimes they released a figure that was upside down in the packaging or it had a, like an arm missing or there was there was a, a a different gun in the box than what was a, because the factory screwed up and those things go for a lot of money so that's what i'm saying about the ash williams misspelling if you have the original packaging with the original base without the stickers you might be able to get away with a, you know a slightly rarer figure in the future but like i said a lot of people spent a lot of money on this you know this was what 330 dollars for the exclusive edition so i think people would prefer if it had proper accuracy so yeah they also had defects from the stand i believe the uh i can't even remember her name gertrude or something like that it was um in the film i believe it was ted raimi in a little rubber suit and that little bit from the stand it's like a little sculpted piece had no hair on it or anything and people were kicking off about that as well and you can't blame them there was also the chainsaw had a little bit of glue stuck on the bottom of it it looks messy and horrible but as it is let's actually see what we finally got with the asmus toys one six scale the evil dead ash williams figure okay and here's the packaging for ash williams you can see they've actually put a sticker over the front here that says ash williams spelt correctly to be honest i would have preferred the misspelling it's probably going to be worth a little bit more money in the future if you have the misspelled box because it is an oddity as you can see it's got a picture of the promo art on the front so obviously they're trying to show off what this figure looks like inside and if you look at this directly you'll know this is going to have a way better paint app than what you're going to get in the box because the prototypes are always better except for in very rare instances i remember the 30 rambo was actually better in hand than it was in the uh, prototype but as it is you've got the evil dead 2 dead by dawn logo down here and you've got a bit of a cut out because this is a slip sleeve and then on the side the picture spreads over with the same logo and this has some debossing on here so it actually the evil dead 2 and the dead by dawn you can actually feel this is raised off the box very nice very nice sort of matte finish as well and you've got all your actual logos and your barcodes and whatnot 
and then we've got on the same side Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn. Up the top, same again, but not raised. And then just a little bit of the artwork on the bottom. And as you can see, as we slide this off, it comes up here. Do, 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 do. Ah, there we go. You can see the figure inside and there is all the accessories. Here's a funny thing. They actually spelt it right on the box on the inside here, Ash Williams. Thank God, eh? Okay, let's open him up. Let's have a look at him. Okay, so here he is just straight out of the box and you can see he comes with a load of accessories. It's actually mind blowing because I'm quite impressed by the amount that they've given me, but that's not to say it doesn't have its problems. We can see that he comes with his chainsaw and this is awesome. This thing is great. I mean, you can feel the cold of the metal from the blade there. It looks like really rough, like a proper chainsaw. It's got some blood splatter on it and stuff. And you see he's got all this dark wash and speckling all the way through the actual plastic bits. And it just goes onto a wrist peg on his hand. But then the weight of this does tend to drag it down. So I'm very curious to see if this could survive um, you know, being on a wrist peg for, you know, a, a generous amount of time. But it also comes with this little pull string, so you can actually get the chainsaw sort of look like it's working. I'm never pulling that thing again. It feels like it's just on a piece of cotton string or nylon or something like that. So yeah, that's going to break in years to come, and everyone's going to say that when they're selling theirs. The uh, string's broken on the chainsaw, but. As it is, it's still a very nice looking one. He also comes with a ton of hands, including gun holding hands, expressive hands, and they're all dirty and filthy with a big wash all the way through them, which is really good. And there's a generous amount, including fisted hands, gripping hands, pretty much every single hand you could ever want. And it also comes with this really nice dismembered hand that um, he cuts off in the movie with the chainsaw, which is one of my favorite bits in the whole movie when he's chasing his hand all the way around the room. It's just so much fun and you can see it's got all the little details with all the little muscles and striations through the uh, the wounds on the hand. Very claw-like, very uh, menacing and it's even got some light speckling in there and stuff to make it look a bit more realistic. And then there's like the bloodiness on the stump there. Again, I, I really like this. The only thing that would have made it better is if it was uh, flipping him the bird because that that would have been the perfect pose for this little accessory anyway he also comes with an extra head sculpt which is the uh, possessed ash head sculpt i do like this it looks really good the teeth are a little bit um softly painted but nothing too bad the wash looks good the eyes look good again he's got sort of like the blood on the ear and across the forehead like in the film but uh, yeah sculpting is very very nice on this these are my least favorite accessories. They're not very good. They've um, put it on this new body that they're calling the Adam body, which is, I think, probably designed by Asmus. And they're going to keep maybe pumping out more figures with the Adam body, possibly. Or the factory they got to make it will just rip it off themselves and just release loads of these bodies into the wild if they get the chance. So, yeah, you might see loads of um, knockoffs of the Adam body on the 1-6 scale market coming soon. Comes the ability to detach the arms and then you can put these sort of rubbery skin arms on, which is really nice. They're very seamless, but unfortunately they are basically a turd for posing because they've got ratchets in the arm there. But look, look what happens when you fold them or even, even one, I do one click. There we go. Look how horrible that is. It was the same with the Rambo on 3-0 body. It was just, they don't look very good. They're absolutely fine when they're kept straight, but you bend them, they look crap. They would have done better if they would given us rubber sculpted arms with a joint there, and then we could just pose it around. That would have been a lot easier. But at least it's weathered around the wrist, eh? So that's a nice little detail, but it's all for naught when you can't believe bend the arms around it looking crap. But then you get the Necronomicon, and this is one of my favorite accessories, because A, it's sculpted really well. It's got that nice, horrible wash in it, but a slight green hue all the way through it very well and then when you open it up you've got real pages and it's actually the real pages from the ne necronomicon as well very very nice so that's that's a, like almost iconic that picture yeah so <laughs> i really like that accessory and he also comes with this demonic dagger i've forgotten the name of it it's just escaped my brain but i know i know it's in the film and it looks really nice it's slightly rubbery as well so it's not gonna you know stab anyone anytime soon but I'm not sure if anyone's gonna pose him with it, but they might. Who knows, you know? 
This is why you get all these accessories, so you can change the poses every so often and uh, not let the figure get boring. And then of course he got his boomstick. And this is really, really nice. I like this one. It's got a nice dry brush through the barrel. The wood is, yeah, fairly decently painted. It looks a little bit plastic. The wood details look like they've been painted on, but not sculpted in. But it's really good. It opens up. There's no, um, there's no shotgun shells you can put in it. But yeah, that's gonna be super effective for the figure. He also comes with two extra wrist pegs. He also comes with a bloody stump bandage for his right arm just before he actually gets the chainsaw. It's nice, but I don't think anyone's gonna pose him with it. Why? Because you've got a chainsaw for a hand. Why would you have an ash without his chainsaw? It makes no sense. So it's nice that they included it and some people will enjoy the uh, that little extra detail. But for me, uh, it's surplus to requirement. And he also comes with this extra bloody shirt for when you actually want to take him and he's a bit more battle damaged. He's got this all torn up and you can put his arm through here. And then this is where the seamless arms come in so that he can actually look a bit more realistic. And here is the head sculpt of Linda that's supposed to go on the base. Oh yeah! Asmus didn't include it. I opened it up. It wasn't in the packaging. So yeah. No Linda head sculpt for me. I've sent an email to Asmus, hopefully they reply. But speaking of problems, one of the issues I've got is this base. You can see, I'm trying to shine it into the light so you can actually see some, it's got some few scratches on there. It's not, it's not a big deal. But yeah, when you open this up, the last thing you want is to see damage like that. It kind of, it, it sours your uh, enjoyment a little bit when you first get your figure. But other than that, you can see they've actually replaced the nameplate and spelt it right again. I'm a bit miffed about that because I personally would have liked the misspelt version because, uh, yeah, I have a funny feeling in the years to come they're going to be slightly rarer. As it is, it's a very nice base. This part is separate to the bottom part. I think you can actually pull it off, look. Yeah, you actually pull this off and you can see it comes in two parts. It's a very nice, unique base. I haven't seen one like this before. They haven't just used a, a stock generic one. It looks like they've actually gone to town and designed their own, which is always nice, especially when you get all this detail in the post that you don't normally get with most figures. They're normally just plain black generic stands, but at least they've gone ahead and given you sort of like a nice decal sticker to make it look a bit like the environment of the floor of the cabin. And then you've got Ash Williams name sculpt there, which is again, a bit more personality to it. It's not the usual white writing on the black base. They're sort of giving you a bloody sort of decal on the back of it. It's just like a nice little background. Okay, and coming in and having a look at the head sculpt, you can see it's, it's not as bad as people were worried about. It genuinely isn't. I actually think they maybe they've added a little bit more blood than they did the first time to the head. The um, the marks here look a little dull. They're not as good, but um, yeah, they've seemed to have given some sort of like a glossy, sort of transparent red in there to make it look a little bit more bloody. Maybe they actually got this guy and told it told the factory to go in and just dab an extra little bit of blood around his forehead because it is nice and glossy and shiny and wet. But yeah, I think they've done some nice speckling around the skin tone. The eyes are nice and glossy. But yeah, it, this is a step down from the prototype, absolutely. One of my main criticisms of the head sculpt is the hair. It looks pretty good, but it is a little bit toyetic and it is a little bit soft in the detail. One of the main details that I think that, that it falls down is just here, where you can see the blood stops right at the bottom of the base of the head, but then doesn't flow onto the neck. So it makes it look a little bit more artificial and not as natural flowing, which is a shame. I think if you get a bit, like I said, a bit of Tamiya clear red, and just dab a little bit on, maybe an extra little bit, get this neck with a little bit of uh, more blood running into it, and it will look a lot better and a bit more natural. He's got the chin. Also got some really nice touches in the weathering department. You can see he's got these horrible, nasty marks and dirt and mud all over his shirt goes all the way around the back. It's not like they just did the front and then forgot about the back. They actually did all the detail there. You can see his gun holster has the weathering as well. I will say the body doesn't seem to have that much weathering, especially around the neck. You think you would have had a bit more, but then you come down, look at those trousers. Oh, they're filthy. Look at that. Like it feels filthy as well. It feels like there is absolutely a heck of a lot of mud and weathering on these. They're a bit stiff and they're rough to touch because of the paint, the dry brushing that's gone onto these trousers. 
it works really well. And then of course he's got the sculpted shoes. A little bit more mud on there would have been better, but they still look reasonably dirty and um, quite film accurate. So yeah, I haven't got major complaints about the weathering because mostly I couldn't do better myself. But you can see, yeah, he's even got some sort of dust bits all over the edges of the pockets that aren't on the rest of the uh, figure. And he's got that sort of, some parts are a bit shiny, some are a bit matte. Yeah, honestly, the uh, the weathering really isn't a big complaint for me. And articulation wise, he looks down about that much. Can look up quite far, tilt his head from side to side quite a lot. There is not a massive amount of articulation in the body though. This torso, it's got a rubber cover over it, so it doesn't, you know, articulate that well. He turns a little bit, but not a massive amount. The arms go up really, really high, which is good. There is a small butterfly joint, can go forward and back quite a bit. There is a bicep swivel. There is a double bend in the arms so he can get his arms really far up. And he does have wrist pegs that he can spin all the way around and go forward and back. Not a lot of articulation in the waist, a tiny bit of swivel, but then the hips are on ratchets and his legs can go out to about there. His legs can go straight forward. He does have thigh swivel. There is a double bend in the knees can nearly kick his own butt and the feet are on pegs so they can swivel a bit and there is a tiny bit of a ankle pivot but not a massive amount because the boots restrict on the ankle there overall it is a nice head sculpt it's just not as good as the prototype i have to say at the end of the day this is exactly what i expected from asmus it's not blowing me away but also it's not that bad either it does work for the figure my main gripes are the fact that there isn't much articulation in the torso so overall you'll get enough out of this guy that you'll enjoy posing him around i think okay just taking the shirt off you can see this is the body they've got underneath which is quite a good sort of generic body i think this would actually work for quite a few customs i'm going to swap the other arm out and uh, see what it looks like it's just a porthole in there and here he is with the possessed ash head sculpt on i've put the chainsaw in his hand and he's carrying his boomstick and also put on the more damaged shirt to reveal more of the torso and put a seamless arm on and i have to say the seamless arm and the torso are a little too clean for my liking he also does not have the scratches that were advertised in the prototype which is a big no-no you shouldn't do that you can't just forget about it it's just not on somebody at asthma should have said hey look he doesn't have any of the scratches in there or anything. Even if they were painted on, you could say, well, we tried, you know, but they, they didn't even try. And it lets down the effort they've put into producing this extra shirt for him and the seamless arms by cutting out a nice little detail like that, because that's why we buy these one six scale figures for those nice little details that you wouldn't normally get in an average action figure. Okay, well, let's finally look at the base. This is the luxury edition. So it comes with this big, heavy, I think it's resin base. I mean, it's, it's a ton weight. It's basically where all the weight of this figure comes from. And you've got this backdrop piece here. You've got this bottom piece here. You've got this post, you've got this shelf, and you've got that vice. And you've also got the lady herself, the one who's been causing quite a lot of the controversy online on all the Facebook groups and stuff, uh, Henrietta Hersa. Look at that. Ooh. Oh, that is a sexy lady how you doing as you can see it's actually quite a nice piece it's very well painted it's very well designed it's it's probably more de well designed than it actually needs to be because it's pretty much going into this bit here it's going to be covered over by the actual lid of the uh, basement itself so yeah and then one of the problems that they had was getting this lady her hair lots of them were turning up without hair which is surprising because um yeah you think it would have included that but they, 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 for some strange reason, they didn't. Now, Asmus said they were going through each one to check to make sure that they did have hair. But from what I've seen online, it's it's almost like it, a few of them came out with that hair. The rest are absolutely fine. I really like this hair. It's really thin, really fine. I mean, this is this is actually like really well done six scale hair. The the hair is really nice. They could have gone with some really crappy doll hair, but that is actually really high quality for what is essentially going to you know be covered over by the lid of that bloody basement but overall yeah i do like it my only gripe is that it looks like it's just been glued onto the head instead of actually been you know like drilled in and then haired into those tiny little detailed holes that will allow it to stay in and be strong for long it looks like the glue could come undone in the very very far future 
and bits of the hair is going to fall out. I don't have any qualms with this little accessory. I really, really don't. But that's it, really. That's that's everything else. The skin textures, the uh, the damage to the uh, skin, all the little tears and blood and the horrible, bloody, sort of glossy, white, milky eyes. All those tiny little flecks to give her those sorts of imperfections in the skin. Yeah, this this looks exactly like Henry from the film, and I, I can't fault him for that. I can fault him for a lot of things, but I can't really fault him too much for this. And of course, here's the base, and you can see it's got Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn here. My only gripe with this base is, I don't know, these these roots look a little, I don't know, they look a little bit cheap painted. There's something a little bit like, bit, 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 bit. You know, just like they've just done it with a brush really quickly. Something I could do. And that they, if I'm saying to you, hey, I could do that, then then you're in trouble, really. But other than that, I actually think the sculpting is very nice. The details are very good. And uh, overall, when somebody walks into a room and sees this, they're going to go, oh, that looks cool. All the details, you can see all the silver paint for the nails. They're a little bit too clean. So the nails are really brightly shining out, but still, it's not that big a deal. And again, you've got this lovely, lovely dark wash showing off all those sorts of little strands of the wood, all the little bits here looks like wood. You've got the vice, this vice is nicely weathered and damaged. And it would have a head of Linda in it if they'd have included it in the box. I can't, I can't bang. I can't bang the shelf, I'll smash it. I'll lose all my fingers. So, no, 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 no. Imagine, imagine this was a wooden desk and I've gone thumped that. There you go. Yeah. Damn it, Asmus. But yeah, other than that, I have to say it's really, really nice and it's got some real metal chains here. And this lifts up and it's quite heavy. And then you take this lady. I'm gonna put you in there, love. Go on, back in. Get back in your bloody basement, will ya? And then you can close this down. And there she is. And then when people see that, they're going to go, oh my God, they're going to be sort of leaning in, trying to look in there and see the details. So yeah, from that perspective, she looks really, really good. And there's a little hole here where you can put the uh, base from the other stand in so that Ash has a crotch grabber. He can actually just stand securely on there. Okay, overall, I actually kind of like the figure, but that's because I'm managing to find, I'm having fun with it, just posing him around and doing like crazy, silly poses and stuff. I'm very miffed about the fact that the QC issues are, are, they are a massive letdown. When I opened up the box and I found that, that that Linda head was missing, it did make me just sink into my seat and go, oh no, I can see how this is going to go. However, once I got over that and I started looking at the figure on its own merits, I think it's a good figure. I think they've done a reasonably good job. I wouldn't say they've done an amazing job. Uh, no one's going to say they've done an amazing job. They've missed bits out. They've cut out the uh, the battle damage on the torso. The figure had misspelling on the box and stuff. It has been a bit of a letdown. Asmus did drop the ball a little bit. The base is still pretty good. It does feel a little, for the price you're paying. It's almost twice the price of the standalone figure. So I would have liked a little bit more tension and detail to some of these bits down here. And again, it just looks like someone's dabbed the brush twice with a dark green and a light green and that's it and it just a little bit more blending would have gone a long way but you know that's just my own personal opinion but I know other people have felt that way as well however I will say like the details on the uh, wood and everything are perfect the nails all in the back they actually shine up and look like metal the vice looks good and dirty and grimy I really really want to see someone who's actually got real good painting skills tackle this base and actually add some more better paint apps to it because i think this really does have the potential because the sculpt underneath is there that being said the weathering on ash is great i do like it um i think some people are really disappointed by it but of all the problems this guy has the weathering isn't one of them he's he, it looks good trust me in hand it looks really good i really like the chainsaw they've done a really nice job with that but as it is the way I'm going to use him and pose him, he's got everything I need. I'm not going to have like the ripped shirt with the torso showing. It's not for me. The seamless arms. Um, nice attempt, I guess. But they're... Yeah, I don't like them. I don't like them at all. Look at that. Ugh. 
just doesn't work. You can have him down on his side, but if you wanted to pose him with the seamless arms, you're crap out of luck. They're not that nice. But I do like the uh, possessed head sculpt. That's really good. However, I will say they did let themselves down with a couple of poor choices with the paint application and their QC is really needing to tighten up a little bit. They need to talk to whoever's supposed to be doing the checks on this stuff and tell them to knuckle down and do better because there's just too many slight niggling flaws for anyone to just ignore. They need to tell somebody to tighten their belt a little bit. Now I know there's some people who are really looking forward to my video because they thought I was gonna absolutely destroy Asmus. And I can't destroy them because you can see they've actually done a lot of work to it and they've actually put some effort in. However, their QC department needs a bloody good kick up the arse. That's the truth of it. Okay guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. If you do me a favor now, if you can get the fuck out of my cave. I've actually got another figure here. I think, I think it's the Gambit Cajun car dealer. Not 100% certain it could be the uh, Suso Toys Herman or Rorschach from Watchmen. It's one of those two for definite. So I'm going to get on and try and unbox that guy now. Thanks a lot guys. Bye bye.